Hi there, guys and gals. My name is Adam Dunlap. I'm with Parkour.com, and I'm here today to discuss to discuss judging at free running competitions. We have the Art of Motion coming up in just two days, October 5th. Maybe it's tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this. Maybe it already happened. Who knows? But as most people know, as is traditional, the Art of Motion had online submission, an online submission qualifier. From it, eight people were selected to compete in Italy, four men and four women. Some people didn't like the people that were chosen, or to say differently, didn't agree with the judge's decision. And it sparked a little bit of a discussion. Mostly headed up by first Bob Reese, uh, Julian Williams chimed in, and Joey Adrian chimed in to the discussion. They all contributed some great ideas. However, I really felt compelled to contribute because number one, uh, Parker.com is a great platform to start to disseminate this type of discussion to move our industry and sport forward. And then number two, I didn't think a lot of their ideas were well thought out and so, and also definitely not comprehensive but missing some big gaping holes and so someone's got to fill that gap and so I think that I am one of the few people that have the experience to kind of see outside the box you can disagree with that that's fine but I think the ideas that I'm, gonna, I'm gonna present are just no one's talking about them so if you're interested in the judging and the future of judging in the free running world I think this video is a must watch and if nothing else it'll spark some ideas that can continue the discussion forward I'm gonna talk about eight things that have been brought up, I think they've all been brought up mostly by Joey, Julian, and Bob. Uh, nepotism in the judging in the parkour world. The problem with the submission process that no one is talking about. No one's talking about this. It's so obvious. No one sees it but me, apparently. Uh, how to choose judges. Uh, should we have judges for each category or judges overall? Being right versus being consistent. How to clarify the criteria or should we? This one's going to surprise you. No one's talking about this, but this can open your mind. Uh, Oleg Vorslav, I want to talk about him. Everyone knows Oleg, I hope. And then, of course, my two biggest beefs with the free running competitions. This is parkour.com, but one of the visions and goals and missions of parkour.com is to represent the original discipline while encompassing the evolution of the sport through parkour and free running. And so this seems like something worth talking about. Now, two caveats before I jump in very, very quickly. Number one, I'm not that into free running cops, uh, free running comps, <laughs> free running cops, goodness, free running comps. Also, I don't have any any dog in this fight. So what that means is like, I'm a tracer, guys. I learned parkour from David Bell. Like, th that's my history. I've never been interested in free running personally as a personal sport for me. Um, and I think that's what actually makes me a good person to, to chime in and give ideas because I don't have, like I said, number two, a dog in the fight. At the end of the day, you judge free running competitions how you want from now to the future. If I can be involved in helping shape that, I would love that. I'm no interested in judging, no interest in competing, and I don't really care who wins because I like to be unbiased and cheer for everybody. So these ideas I think are really neutral just to help the community progress in their thinking. And like I said, uh, work with them, see what they do for you, and then spread them, spread them around. So let's jump into it. It's about time. Nepotism, claims of nepotism. Some people said there's nepotism in the judging. Uh, we, we know and we've always known that there's kind of an, I don't want to say an old boys club because everyone's a kid, but there's always been an in-crowd in the parkour world. And I think that's just the nature of the beast. Like everything has an in-crowd, have like people that like each other and people that know each other better. That's not really a problem. Claims of nepotism, that's, that's pretty rude. I'm going to read you the definition of nepotism because there wasn't any in the judging. The judge did a phenomenal job in my opinion, a phenomenal job. Nepotism, the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. Nepotism in the art of motion, judging, would have been if DK, Dom, and Jason Paul had all been given invites out of the four men invited. Now, I think you can make an argument that one or two of those guys could have been invited. None of them were invited. The judges did a phenomenal job. If you think there was nepotism in the judging, you're, you're just off your rocker. You're butthurt that you didn't get invited. That's what that one boils down to. They did a phenomenal job judging. Even going so far as to choosing people that some of us had never heard of and didn't even see their videos. I watched a lot of videos. I didn't even see some of the winners, some of the invitees. So fantastic job to the judging and congratulations to everyone. There was no nepotism. Judges were awesome. If you disagreed with them, that's a different point. But the judges did a very, very good job. Okay, what... 
what is no one talking about? What's the problem with the submission process? Here's the problem with the submission process. And it's really specific to the art of motion because no one else does this type of online submission. But since the art of motion is the biggest competition, then uh, obviously the focus is on it. What's the biggest problem? The biggest problem is that the submission tapes have really nothing to do with the competition. And th this is why. Because people in their submission tapes, almost everyone, has four or five or six lines in, a, in their 90 second video. The Art of Motion, you get one line. You get one long line. So if you're doing six lines and they're 15 seconds each, like that shows your potential to maybe be able to do that for 15 seconds under the pressure on concrete with all these other factors involved, a place you're not comfortable with, you've never trained in before except maybe the days before. It doesn't say anything about you being able to do that and being able to do it for a prolonged period of time. The submission process should be like, shouldn't be 90 seconds, it should be three lines max. That's what it should be. Or two lines max. Or submit your best line. Because what's going to happen this year at the Art of Motion, which happens every year, um, well, for different reasons, but you get someone out there that, that can't do it. And some of that is, is mental stress, right? You got the pressure of it. Some of it is you just kind of choke. Like, that's athletes in every sport. I don't dog anybody for that. I do dog people who can't put together a legitimate line that lasts more than 15 seconds. If you get to the AOM, you better be able to put together a line that lasts more than 15 seconds. Otherwise, like, you just stole someone's spot. You know what I mean? But that's not the judge's fault. Like, that's maybe the athlete's fault. But it's, it's the criteria that the judges are using. Like, the length of line should be important. Or you should have to have at least like a 30 second or 45 second line or something in there. It's just not indicative of what's required at the art of motion. This goes into one of my big beasts with free running competitions. But we'll get to that at the end. And it's a must listen. If you, if you don't want to watch any more of the video, skip ahead to that because it's super important. All right. Number three. How to choose judges. Now, this is quite funny. Um, it just one frustrated me. I heard Julian and, and Bob uh, say that judges there should be an application process joey said they shouldn't be grandfathered in here's the thing um you guys are wrong all three of you are wrong to say that there needs to be an application process is putting your definitions on someone else's competition it's not your right it's not your place now where i agree i agree with the sentiment it'd be nice to have the best judges I would be, what does that even mean? I guess they'd be the most knowledgeable, the most objective, the most ability to um, be concise and, and, and give an accurate, consistent score, I suppose. But first of all, people are going to have different definitions of what the best judging is. And then even if you could figure out who it was, again, it's not your right to decide who should be the judges. So at your own competition, Bob, at your own gym. And then see if in five years, if it becomes really big, if you have people that you aren't associated with telling you how to choose your judges. It makes no sense, guys. Now, I agree I agree with the sentiment, though, and I think that grandfathering people in is is kind of a, a slippery slope in the sense that you probably won't get the best. I, I think uh, you may because they have the most experience at that level. That's for sure. But I think younger people probably at this age uh, have grown up in a different parkour paradigm and a different free-running paradigm, so I think they... Uh, would be very good at it. I think there's there's definitely a crew out there that can be assembled that would be phenomenal. That would probably be better than the current judges. People that are really passionate about judging and, and that sort of thing. But uh, to say who you think should be allowed to judge or how they should be chosen, come on guys, it's, it's just not your place. It's not your place. So, um, And one more thing about that, realize that when you when you have a business or anything that isn't purely volunteer level art right then you have priority structures so for example maybe this person is a better judge but maybe they're prone to emotional decisions or maybe they're prone to upping the scores of the of the people they like or maybe they're just not dependable you know what i mean so there's all these factors involved maybe it would cost more money to fly them because they live further away and you have budget constraints there's all these different priorities and so it's so myopic to, to think that you should be able to say, oh, there should be an application process. It's not your comp. You're not in charge of it. 
and you don't you're not laying out uh, you're not dealing with all the criteria and variables and priority structures that are needed to make that competition work so with all respect it's a very uh, pretentious thing to say but I agree with the sentiment the sentiment is let's find a way to get really good judges there again the judges from the art of motion qualifier did a phenomenal job they did a phenomenal job now I think you're probably right though the judges from past years have been iffy obviously iffy but uh, who knows I agree with the sentiment just don't be dogmatic and pretentious please okay fourth thing should we have this was a big a big thing between uh, Julian and Joey and Bob and they disagreed actually should we have judges for each category or judges overall I believe Bob and Julian said overall and Joey said for each category it really depends on the on the structure and I think both are fine here's my recommendation that, that really none of those three guys mentioned that's really the most important thing I could say in this video the most important thing if you want to see free running competitions develop in the right way if you want to see the right judging structure which then promotes participation which then promotes competition which then moves the sport forward financially and also athletically if you want to know how to judge something like a free running competition stop trying to make it up go look at people who have already done it and I don't mean NAPC or other gyms I mean skateboarding gymnastics what's the third one? Oh crap there's a third one skateboarding gymnastics this is the fourth this is the third one I can't I'm drawing a mind blank these there are people in these and ice skating ice skating that's what it is ice skating and there's probably other sports too but those are three sports that have an artistic element right Freestyle in skateboarding, obviously. The other two, maybe not so much freestyle. Maybe zero freestyle, unless you mess up. You have people that have been around that sport for decades. You have judges that have been immersed in those sports for 50 years. And they're part of judging panels that decide who wins Olympic gold medals. They have the criteria down. They have their systems. Go study those systems. Don't give me like this, okay, um, there's like three different judging components and those are worth four and then athleticism is worth 12 don't give them like make up this stuff to then show that creativity isn't as important or whatever like you're just building in bias and building in pretentiousness into your vision of how things should be scored go look at other sports and industries that have already done this look at things like huh why do they have degree of difficulty scores in ice skating and gymnastics huh maybe we should have that in it huh what should we do about the judges being able to see the warm-ups. Look at skateboarding. Do judges watch the warm-ups? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like, instead of creating it from scratch, guys, go to the models that have already been created and draw your wisdom and knowledge from them and then take the parts that are good and take the parts that work for free-running competitions and discard the parts that don't work for free-running competitions and then use that to kind of build up. It's like you have like a 50-year lead and you're like trying to start from scratch. It's very silly. Um, but I will say this, I like personally judging each category because I think it's able to be broken down and explained more easily. And then on top of that, uh, what's going to allow a consistency and a fairness across that is you have lots of judges in each category. So if you have five judges, one for creativity, one for flow, one for uh, athleticism or difficulty, if you, for all the five elements of the art of motion, then there might be some skewed there if, if one judge if one judge just doesn't think it's difficult but he thinks something else that's equally difficult is this is more difficult maybe he's not super trained maybe he's just emotional about it who knows maybe he just made a mistake who knows then you can get skewed scores where people miss out on on advancing or po being on the podium or something like that but if you have multiple judges in each category then you're gonna get averages and it's gonna weigh out so if you have three people judging creativity then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we can trust that score more if we take the averages of those scores than if we just have one person judging creativity because they're going to have their style of creativity, right? So that's what I would say is I like, I like different categories to be judged because it can be delineated and explained more easily. And then, uh, but the only problem is then you got to have more judges. So like, if you're only going to have one category, like overall, like have 10 overall judges or something like that, right? If you're going to have five categories, have three for each category. You gotta have weighted averages to balance out emotional uh, elements or biases or who knows what's going on, other things. So, 
keep that in mind. That's that's an important concept that has to be considered and will be implemented if it hasn't already. Just it will be. It's just where things will trend towards because it's the fairest way to do it. Uh, being right or being consistent. Joey said the judges have to be right, and this is where I disagree with Joey and I agree with Julian. Judges don't have to be right. Not at this stage of the game. They just have to be consistent. They have to be consistent. And that's what allows you to then be precise in your explanation of why somebody got a higher score than somebody else. You've got to be able to articulate that and then do it consistently. That way the athletes feel supported. Even if they don't win, even if they feel like they were robbed of a good score, if you can give them an explanation, then I think that's doing justice to, to the sport and where it is right now. Uh, how to clarify. Oof. Now this is the other giant, giant, giant point that has to be understood. And this is what uh, I don't think Joey's Joey doesn't understand or hasn't hasn't do, his thinking hasn't developed for, f far enough. I love Joey by the way. Love that man. Awesome guy. Um, but this is obviously a, a hole in that thinking, and I think Bob Reese as well um, didn't understand this. Here's the problem, guys. You want ideas to be specified. What makes something more difficult than something else? But this is a black hole. It opens a can of worms when you do this. And here's the example. Listen to this. So the classic example is if you do a trick in the art of motion submission and you land it on grass, it's not as difficult as if you land it on concrete. Everyone knows this. It's intuitive, but it's not written down in the art of motion online submission. So nobody knows for sure, but we think that's obviously what it is. And it should be, right? And it probably is for sure. So Joey said, well, that needs to be delineated. That needs to be specified, as do the other components that make things difficult. But here's the giant problem. Here's what nobody that I've seen talk about this understands yet about judging in the Parker world, Parker free running world, is that once you delineate one thing, you have to delineate everything. Everything. And this is why. Sure, same trick on grass versus concrete. We know concrete wins difficulty. But what if you do a harder trick on grass versus a trick that's not as hard on concrete? Which one is more difficult? And how much more difficult is it? What if you do a trick no one's ever done, but you do it on grass? Like, I think Kalen Chan did a trick in his AOM submission that had never been done before. I'd never seen it before. You do that on grass with like a 12-foot drop or something like that? Or you do like, I don't know, double side pre on concrete, right? Not that that's ever been done. I mean, Max Ansel, but... Which one's harder? I don't, well, actually, no one's done double side pre on concrete. Never mind. But <laughs> you get the point. Is like, even if even if you could decide, okay, even if you could say, well, we've decided through our delineation that this trick that wasn't quite as hard but was on concrete still gets a higher difficulty score. Even if you could all agree on that, which is going to be tricky, but let's say you could get the whole community to agree on that, or the whole judging system, all the judges, you still have to define how much more difficult it is. Is it 0.1 difficulty out of 10? Is it 10 out of out of 20? Like, what's the difficulty difference? And the thing is, think about all the dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of different combos you could do. Especially when you get a new environment, like Santorini or, or Italy. You have places for combinations that have probably never been done, just because of the architecture, architectural difference. You're like, oh, I've never seen that move before. What are you going to do about that, right? How much more difficult is that versus that? So the point is, as soon as you start delineating specifically what's more difficult, then all of a sudden you have to delineate kind of everything. Because then someone's going to say, wait a second. Well, how come how, mine was harder than that? You know what I mean? So just realize you're opening a can of worms. And this is where we have to circle back again to things like gymnastics and ice skating. They have, and I, I don't know if skateboarding has this, but I know gymnastics and ice skating do. They have difficulty scores. Like, this trick is worth this many points. So perhaps you should, we should go through and detail every single trick that's possible and every single combo that's possible and give them a score, and then athletes can put together what type of run they want to do, difficulty versus creativity versus blah, 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 blah. Like, it's kind of trending away from, like, art artistry into, like, this mathematical equation, which is fine. It's a part of it. Call that athleticism. But just realize the can of worms you're opening and why it's not that easy. You can delineate a couple things, but you're shooting yourself in the foot when someone else argues about something else. Make sense? So keep that in mind and realize that as you, as you, as you guys start to structure these free-running judging criteria, 
whether it's for your own personal competitions or whether it's because you want to be an AOM judge or because you are an AOM judge, just have that in mind and realize, oh my gosh, this is actually very, very complicated if you want a good system, which is why you need to go back and study the other systems that have already been created by brilliant people who have spent decades on it and that make the difference between millions of dollars in endorsements and, and all sorts of things. So not to mention national pride, you know, so go look at that, guys. Go look at that. Uh, I don't want to talk anymore, guys. I really don't. Uh, Oleg Vorslav, phenomenal. Like, I think he should get a, uh, what was I going to say about him? He should get like a, an honorary invite to the AOM. Like, th this is where it's like, is free running athletic or is it artistic, right? Is it difficulty or is it creativity? What's more important? Bob Reese thinks it's athleticism. I think it's creativity because I see it as an art, right? And if it's just number crunching, if it's just who can do the biggest flips, where's the art? So uh, I think Oleg's got both. And so that's where it's like, this This is what gets into my two biggest beefs, my two biggest beefs of free running competitions. This is how it ties in. I forgot, but I got some notes here. That's why I keep looking down. The problem with free running competitions today is that all the runs are too short. I don't want to say all the runs. I'll take that back. Go watch the NAPC. It's online. Parkour Origins did a phenomenal job of running the competition. And yet, the freestyle runs, to say they were boring would be would be nice. I don't think I don't think they were free running. And I'm not a free runner, so you know, disregard my opinion. I'm a tracer, you know. But but it was like you'd see people do six tricks in the span of like less than 15 seconds in like a 10 by 10 square. It was like I don't know, back full off a four foot block, and then they kind of clumsily walk over and do like a double flyaway. And then it's like, I don't know, like a step up Webster or something like that to scoot back full. It was, it was something like that. And it's like, great, with clumsy transitions. It's like the problem with the with the free running world today, with the poker free running world today, is that people are so focused on tricks, they forgot about soul. You're so focused on big tricks and getting applause or doing something no one's done before that you forgot about art. Like, like, is that what this is? If it is, that's fine. That's fine, right? But it's the sp the reason parkour resonated is because I believe it's the spirit that David Bell brought to parkour. And the reason free running is where it is is because of the spirit these guys like Ryan Doyle and Daniel Labaka and a lot of other guys brought to the sport in the early days. The spirit's gone. It's just like, let me let me do six tricks. And you're gassed after 12 seconds. It wasn't entertaining. It wasn't interesting. It was difficult. Like, Bravo on the athleticism, but it wasn't free running. It was it was tricking. It was hybrid tricking in gymnastics. Like that's all it is. That's all it is to to most of the competitors that I've seen in the free running world. And and I think it's uh it's backwards thinking. It's backwards thinking, and it and it's it's boring. So that's the two points. The, the lines are too short. There should be a line minimum, which is what's going to happen in the art of motion. Someone here on Saturday is going to do a 15 second line or they'll be gassed after 15 seconds and it just won't be interesting anymore. That's got to be a part of it. If you want to talk about athleticism, stomping a, stomping a big trick is one aspect of athleticism. Being able to do it for more than 10 seconds is another aspect of athleticism, guys. Come on, you know? It'd be like, like if you're in gymnastics, if the floor routine in gymnastics was just one tumbling pass. That's what some of these free running competitions look like is people clunkily doing one tumbling pass with a couple obstacles. It's it's just stupid. It's not a, what our sport is. It's not what poker free running is. It's the growing pains of people being myopically focused on the wrong thing. Or myop myopically focused on only one thing. So, make the lines longer, guys. And then add some creativity, which is why I love Oleg. It's why I love Pasha. Because there's, there's like creativity. And the thing is, is those go hand in hand because as soon as the line can only be 12 seconds, as soon as you're allowed to do a 12 second line, what happens? Well, you jam three or four tricks together. You have to pause between, between each one, find your folks and do your trick. Then you walk to the next one and it becomes kind of like a, a tricking competition at best, although even more boring. But as soon as, as soon as it has to be 45 seconds, now what? Well, now you have to do runs like Pasha does. Where you do like a what did he do like a dive roll like a dive roll full and then he comes out of it and it's like he like he's like half it's like break dancing and half it's moving and half it's this artistic thing and it's like there you go there you go like now you're now you're finding the art of movement there's no art there's no art guys 
in, in half of these runs that I'm seeing from the NAPC. I'm not going to speak about the art of motion. It hasn't happened yet, you know. And traditionally, the art of motion has been phenomenal. You get guys like Bart, who just are phenomenal. Pedro Salgado. Salgado? Salgado? Pedro Salgado. Phenomenal. I know Pedro. I, I used to sponsor Pedro. I used to pay him money uh, to work with Take Flight. So I know Pedro. Um, a lot of guys are throwing down some, are throwing down Al, uh, Titoranko, throwing down some Joy Adrian, obviously, throwing down some awesome, awesome runs. And that's why they should be at the Art of Motion. Those guys, those guys deserve it. They deserve to podium. They're phenomenal. Um, but there's like this upper echelon of like a few guys that get it, that understand the athleticism and the creativity. And everyone else is like, just doesn't get it. And so the Art of Motion I expect to be awesome. The other competitions I've seen are boring. Like just boring. So, yeah. Uh, just my opinion. Have a, whatever opinion you like. I've talked for forever. Hope you listen to this on 1.5 speed. Um, that's all I got, guys. Just some ideas. Take what you want. Throw away what you don't. Maybe it'll start creatively moving the discussion ahead. I do think that judging is important because realize how it tracks back. You have judging. Athletes then train to win the competitions because of how the judging is. And then the competitions are kind of one of the financial outlets, not to mention the gyms where people train, that move our industry ahead financially, which then allows money to flow into it. The more interesting competitions are, the more people will watch them that aren't in the park or free running world, which widens the, the scope, which then widens the advertising potential, which widens the revenue, which then widens and enlarges how much the athletes make that win, which then incentivize more people to train, which then builds more gyms. Like judging, you could say that to get the judging right could be arguably one of the most integral aspects in today's Parker free running world to grow the industry. So it's very important. And I hope these ideas help. And I hope it spawns more discussion with Bob and Julian and Joey and many of you out there who have probably talked about it that I didn't see and many of those now who want to talk about it. So go watch The Art of Motion uh, October 5th, about tomorrow. Uh, can't wait to see it. Hope you are too. Train hard and stay safe.